evil king's story started with him having a shangatank executed over a cup of corn eaten in the wrong season. This was followed by defiance and revolt seen in the actions of Tabufuo, who refused to give up his wine to Menang. Reprisals followed, and Tabufuo and his family narrowly escaped by going into exile. Make sure you watch those videos to have a better understanding of this one. <laughs> Meanwhile, another challenge to Evil King's regime arose at the village frontiers. A neighboring village was waging a war of expansion and news reached the palace that a significant portion of village land had been occupied by the attacking army with lives lost. Evil king, still of age to fight, was expected to lead his people to war. A major part of the chief's legitimacy in those days came from their ability to protect their people from invasion. Evil king called upon the powerful medicine men in the land to empower him with additional charms, rendering him invincible to sharp weapons, firearms, bees, lightning, among others. The ritual for immunity to lightning was going to be done by a specialist being brought in from Cook, a distant village. Evil King spent days waiting for him while the invaders firmly implanted themselves on his territory. Njongchugu, a champion wrestler, without the palace's permission, organized an army of young people, and within a day of fighting, the foreign invaders were expelled and a chunk of enemy territory was even taken over. Funjongchugu went on to discuss the terms of a treaty with the invaders and subsequently emissaries from Evil King's Palace came and agreed to the treaty. And what happened? His, his popularity grew. Some villagers began pitching him as a future king and Evil King felt threatened naturally. For in those days, accession to the throne was not always uh, hereditary. Exceptional bravery in the battlefield could attract the attention of kingmakers. Rumors soon spread that Funjongchugu had been arrested and was being tried on trumped-up charges, including insubordination to the ruler, the lion of the jungle, the one whose fart sent forth the Hamatan. As expected by those who knew Evil King's vileness, Funjongchugu was found guilty, and as expected, his punishment was to be death by drowning at Afoke, the waterfall of doom in the village. Evil King delayed the execution of Funjongchugu. People poured libations and prayed to the gods, hoping that the delay would lead to clemency. But this was vain thinking. Those who knew Evil King understood that he wanted to see Funjongchugu languish in ropes longer. Evil King derived sadistic pleasure in his power to decide life or death. Funjongchugu's execution was set for a day and time of the king's choosing. News of the execution of such a brave and fine young man paralyzed the people. Evil King's spies were everywhere and people dared not murmur a protest, even when alone, for there emerged a saying at the time that even the grasses and leaves of trees had ears. Sadness and fear gripped the entire kingdom. People no longer went to farm or hunt beyond their immediate neighborhood. They moved about in groups of four to stay safe, or at the minimum have witnesses to their deaths. Eventually, the day came for Funjongchugu to be executed. Evil King's town crier went out early that morning and announced that no one was to go out farming or hunting. People came out in their numbers, children in the toe, not so much out of curiosity as out of fear that not coming out could have consequences. As the sun neared the zenith that day, the sorrow-beaten footpath to Afokwe at Mwobu at the front of the file, followed by Funjongchugu and those guarding him and tailed by Menang. 
and the inevitable loot porters. Funjongchugu shuffled forward, looking emaciated, following weeks of torture and hunger. He was singing a defiant song, a soloist whose voice conveyed hope to the forlorn, inspired the hopelessness in the heart of their suffering, and gave them hope. The men who got the message nodded their heads sadly, and women placed their two hands on their heads and did a little funeral dance. No one wailed, lest spies of evil king pick them out. The crowd was growing with people emerging from the bushes, but none dared go too close, for fear of being accused of revolting. Here is an extract of his song. O oh, ye warriors, O oh, ye warriors, look at my sad fate. Evil is he rules my people. O oh, ye counsellors, O oh, ye counsellors, look at my sad fate. Evil is he rules my people. O oh, ye noblemen, O oh, ye noblemen, look at my sad fate. Evil is he rules my people. O oh, ye twin mothers, O oh, ye twin mothers, look at my sad fate. Evil is he rules my people. O oh, ye twin fathers, O oh, ye twin fathers, look at my sad fate. Evil is he rules my people. O oh, Bala and Chugulo, O oh, Bala and Chugulo, Yawa Yawa Lo, Alla Aya Dream of Waterbong. O Bachelo. Oh, but your lawyer, well, you are low. I like a dream for the bong. Oh, but Tabang Gong Lo. Oh, but Tabang Gong Lo. You are low. I like a dream for the bong. Oh, but Tankella. Oh, but Tankella. You are low. I like a dream for the bong. Oh, but Mankella. Oh, but man, girl, oh, yeah, wah, yeah, wah, lo, ah, la, ah, ya, dream, go for the bong. Oh, ngong, wen, lo, oh, ngong, wen, lo, yeah, wah, yeah, wah, lo, ah, la, ah, ya, dream, go for the bong. The execution train eventually reached Afokhe. The waterfall's waters poured thunderously into the pool below and a white mist rose and blanketed most of the area. Fresh winds set the trees and giant grasses around the fall swaying wildly. Funjongchugu's guards positioned him at the crest of the falls at a point where uncountable victims of evil king's ire including babies whose only crime was being born twins, had been placed before, being sent to their death plunge. The guards gave way to Menang, who approached Funjongchugu in a final ceremonial dance in honor of evil king. Funjongchugu was still singing, although his voice was mostly swallowed up by the noise of the waterfall. If he moved a step forward, he could slip and plunge into the falling water. He looked straight ahead, unconcerned with the proceedings. Menang stood behind Funjongchugu, holding his wangbigi with both hands. Menang then heaved itself backwards and shoved Funjongchugu with the wangbigi. Funjongchugu suddenly spun around, grasped the wangbigi, with part of Menang's feathers, and all three, Man, Pole, and Menang, went airborne, spinning a couple of times before disappearing into the mist below, where the pounding waters of the waterfall crushed them against the rocks. The guards were transfixed for a while, then started running away from the waterfall like mad people, with Mobu stumbling and falling, entangled in its costume's feathers. Masquerade and guards knew what awaited them at the hands of evil king, who had just lost his reliable executioner. From that day, a focus ceased to be used as an execution site. 
the story about how evil king was eventually unseated from power will be told in the next episode. I appreciate your listening to this story up to this point. And uh, now is the time to hit the subscribe and like buttons so you receive a notification when the next video comes out.